And welcome to High School Physics Explained. And today I want to specifically talk about the optics of the eye. So if you are a physics student, you're going to get a better understanding of how light refracts through the eye in order to produce a sharp image. But if you're a biology student, you will also get a better understanding of how the eye actually forms an image uh, using the cornea and the lens to ensure a sharp image. Now, I've already produced a couple other videos, one on lenses and one on real images. It's worthwhile watching those before you watch this particular video, as I'll refer to some of the content that was covered in those videos. But before we go on, let's have a quick introduction for some uh, and review for others in terms of the anatomy of the eye, because that will be really important in the subsequent part of the video. This is a, obviously a cross section of the eye. And of course, the eye's responsibility is to produce a sharp real image on the back surface of the eye called the retina. And then the image over here is interpreted by cells which transmit the information to the brain. But the really important is that the image needs to be sharp. How does that do that? Well, obviously light enters the eye and then bends in such a way to form a real image at the back. But how does it do that? Well, the light has to basically pass through two particular mediums that will uh, to determine how much that light bends. The first part is the cornea. And the cornea does most of the bending of light. And then, of course, the light passes through this opening here called the pupil and then passes through the lens. And the lens has the ability to adjust its curvature to, in order to produce a real image. And so we have the lens over here. And then what we have here are some ligaments and muscles that will determine how much this is distorted in order to produce a sharp image. Now, this is not actually empty space. This is actually filled with a jelly-like substance called vitreous humor. And what that does is, is that once the light actually bends here, it will no longer bend once it goes through this particular medium. And so, in essence, what happens is light enters the, the cornea. It bends, of course. The amount it bends will actually, of course, uh, be determined by all these factors over here. And of course, that what that means is that over here, it produces a real image. But let's now go through the details of what happens here. So here, of course, is a well-known animation by FET. And I've used this before to show you how a real image is actually formed behind the lens. So if I have a object here that I'm looking at and I move that object, you can see that the position of the real image that is what is in focus, will be changed by the fact as I move the object nearer and further. And so that's really quite helpful. But in terms of understanding how an image forms on the eye, we have a problem. That is, the, as I move the object closer to the focal point and move it away, the position of the focused real image changes. And of course, that's a problem. Because if I now actually place my eye over here so that the lens now represents the actual lens inside the eye, of course, we know that the cornea does most of the bending, but we're going to use our lens as the predominant uh, refractive object. If I move this object now here, that is now roughly there. And I'm going to position it in such a way that it sits there. You can see that's the position where it is in focus. But if I now move my object closer, you can see that what happens is, is that the real image forms beyond the actual eye. So it is now going to appear out of focus. Similarly speaking, if I move my object beyond that point, my real image falls well short of the retina and as a result will also appear out of focus. So what will need to be done? Well, what needs to be done, of course, is changing the actual lens. And what we change is the actual curvature ages, how much it bends by. And it's done in two ways. In its relaxed position, these there are ligaments here that pull this really tight. And so when 
they are in a relaxed position, what was going to happen? They're going to pull so tight. So when an object is really far away like this, we're going to have them the lens actually quite relaxed. And as you can see, I'm changing the curvature here to simulate that there so that they're in their nice relaxed position. And as you can see, that causes the object to be falling onto the retina at the place where the real image is in focus. So far away objects, your lens it is in its most relaxed state and the suspensory ligaments here are pulling it tight and you do have muscles involved here and they actually, uh, we'll talk about them in a second, but they're not being used and so as a result it's in focus. Then the object of course moves closer. Now what happens next? Well as you can see the real image falls beyond. And so what now happens is there are muscles that pull. They're called ciliary muscles and they cause the curvature to increase and see what happens. It causes the real image to now fall onto the retina. That is, you're working to focus something that's closer. And so therefore, if I continue the process, if I'm moving something really close like so, you can see that now the curvature needs to be adjusted again. And again, these, these ciliary muscles are pulling and they're causing, a, uh, causing the lens to become fatter. And so as a result, it now falls in focus. So in order to ensure that the real image is always sitting at the same distance to the lens, the curvature of the lens is adjusted to ensure that the image is in focus. And so that is, in essence, what causes you to focus. Adjusting the lens's curvature to ensure that the real image actually falls onto the retina. Because, of course, if the image falls short or falls beyond, the object is out of focus. So what if the case you do actually have the inability to focus? So let's say you have a problem focusing on something that is far away. So here's my object to represent far away. And of course, your eyes are naturally in the relaxed state. And so what happens is, is this. You have a situation that your eye can only go that far. The object falls short. So what we say is if you have the inability, in other words, these can't, this cannot relax any further and it still falls short. So we now call a person such like this short-sighted because the image or the real image falls short of the retina. And as a, as a result, because it cannot relax any further, we can't make this curvature any less so that this falls back onto the back of the retina, we, you are short-sighted. And we often refer to this also as myopia, the inability to focus on objects that are far away. So how is that fixed? Well, it's fixed by placing a concave lens in front of the eye. Now, what does that do? Well, what happens, of course, is this, this light diverges and it causes the actual image to diverge out so that the actual point where this focuses is actually a little bit further because of the fact that the lens here actually causes it to diverge. And so it is pushed back over here. And so what will happen, of course, is, is that the object will appear in focus. You can tell that with a person's glasses. If you look at someone's glasses, you know from my previous work that the divergent lens or a concave lens will cause a reduction in the size of the object. Have a look at someone who is wearing glasses. Does their face appear a little bit smaller through the glasses? Well, they're wearing a concave lens. That tells you straight away that they have problems seeing long distances. And as a result, we say that they're myopic or they are short sighted. So let's now go on to explain the other alternative. So here we have our, our person. And in this case, they have problems seeing something that is close. So this is characteristic of people getting older. And I myself am wearing glasses at the moment. And 
as a result, I have a situation where I have difficulty focusing on something that's close. So here's my object that is close. And as you can see, in my case, I will ha I can clearly have a case where my lens has the inability to bend a lot. So my eye may be in this situation. And yes, I can adjust the curvature a little bit, but I can only adjust it to a certain degree. That is, these muscles don't work that well. And so what happens is I would like this lens to be fatter, to have a uh, much uh, greater curvature, but I have the inability to do so. And my real image falls definitely now beyond my retina. So we say I am long sighted because of the fact that the image drops long. It goes beyond the actual retina. Another name for it is hyperopia and hyper means beyond. So that's another way of describing it. But what would I need to do to fix it? Now, if you said I need to fix it is that I need to bend the light a little bit more. You are correct. If I now place a convex lens in front of these light lays, what is going to happen now to my light rays? Well, my light rays here will actually bend a little more. And so what happens instead of appearing up up here, they're going to actually bend more and they're going to appear down here. Similarly speaking, the light rays over here are going to bend more and therefore going to end up over here. The end result is, is that these light rays will now converge to a point over here. So in other words, this pencil will not appear down here. The pencil will appear here sharp and in focus. And that is because by accentuating the magnification, accentuating the effect of this lens by using a convex lens, I've brought my real image closer. So in essence, what I've done is I have increased it so that it actually moves to this position over here. But rather than my ciliary muscles doing that work, it is this added convex lens that has actually made that possible. And so in this case, I have a convex lens to correct my hyperopia or my long sightedness. Again, how can you tell that from looking at a person? Well, have a look at their glasses. If their eyes appear a little bit larger through the actual glasses that they're wearing, then those glasses are predominantly convex lenses. And if they're convex lenses, that means that they are obviously increasing the bending. And that means that they are clearly long sighted and have difficulty focusing on the objects close by. So there you have it. We've looked at the understanding of the refraction of the lens in the eye in order to produce a real image at the back of the retina. That is, we need to keep the distance fixed so the curvature is adjusted by the workings of the ciliary muscles and the suspensory ligaments uh, that hold the lens in place and how different types of corrective lenses will correct either hyperopia or myopia, either long-sighted or short-sighted. I hope that gives you a good understanding of the eye and its functions. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. I hope you found that video useful. And remember, like, share and subscribe. Oh, and if you have a comment or a question, or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.